gonna do is we're gonna go in and cut the bigger leaves like this and harvest those out. Yeah, so that it focuses, so the plant can focus their energy on the actual core. Welcome back to another tutorial on how to grow bok choy. We're mid-cycle here. We're going to be ready to harvest very, very soon. Um, so we're going to be doing a few inspections and SOPs on the bok choy, making sure that we're getting the characteristics that we want, making sure that they're getting the light that they need, the fertilizer that they need, and that the environment is good to go. Obviously, we repeat that process for all the crops in the farm, but uh, since the bok choy is pretty close to being able to harvest, we kind of want to focus our attention a little bit more towards it, make sure we finish with a nice product. So the first thing we're going to do now is look at the environmental control uh, of the farm. And one of my first go-to will be to look at this sensor right here. I got a little screen uh, on it. So I'm at 571 ppm, 50% humidity, and 24C. Humidity is a little bit low in this case, so we will have a look as to why that is, and we'll go on the computer in the main lobby to have a look at that. Let's go now. All right, so we're back in the lobby right now, and we're gonna have a look at the temperature control system here, the Nerva, uh, the HydroX Pro. Um, so basically what we're gonna look at first is our temperature, humidity, and CO2. CO2 level is a little low right now, and I know why, but I'm gonna show you guys how to diagnose this. And air temp, it's supposed to be in a 22 range. It's higher up now, because we turned off the age back for the video. Uh, but let's just say that this is 22 steady. And then the air humidity at 56 is perfect. So um, on the CO2 side, let's go have a look at our historical data. And right here, and we're gonna put CO2 as a type, enter. And if we look at our graph, we're at 997 on the CO2 side, and then all of a sudden it drops to 319. That line right here that goes back up is a telltale sign of running out of CO2 in a tank. So we have injection, tank CO2 injection, and uh, we add CO2 like that inside the tank, inside the farm. And another thing too is that, why is it at 319? atmospheric CO2 right now on the planet that keeps going up, but it's 420 uh, ppm. So we're 100 CO2 lower than the atmospheric level outside. And then I noticed that we ran out of CO2, so I turned on uh, fresh air intake. So that's why we went back up here to the 420 range or so. And then just before the video, I turned it off and the CO2 went back down to 311. That's because the plants are eating so much with their photosynthesis, uh, the nutrients and the light and the CO2 is being all processed that it can actually remove CO2 from the air lower than the atmospheric pressure. And that's why we're getting lower there. And then the CO2 goes back up sharply here. And that's because we are inside the farm and we are breathing air outside and therefore injecting CO2 inside the farm by just our own breath and you have to be careful when you look at the sensor if you're speaking into it the co2 will actually go up from your own breath so something to watch out for so we changed out the tank and we're going to turn on the co2 um, right here in our devices co2 injection to auto and we see a green light here so co2 is back on and we are good to go now obviously if you do your sops properly and you look at your dials this would never happen i'm busy doing other things than just farming and therefore ran out of some gas uh, but it's not a big problem for uh in terms of the growth of the bok choy since we are pretty much finished growing so that's good there let's have a look at the irrigation skit for what the fertilizer levels are at i'm looking for 1.4 1.5 vc let's see where it's at okay so we're at the irrigation skit i want to make sure that the fertilizer is at the level that we want now obviously in this farm the fertilizer injection system is automated so it's usually really, really good, uh, but we're 1.4 to 1.5 is what I'm looking for, and we're right in the middle at 1.44, 1.45, it's kind of skipping. So fertilizer is good that. pH 5.9, that's also very good. Uh, some people like, die hard keeping it at 5.8 pH. I like to do pH drift from 5.5 to 6.5, so that way, uh, the uh, micronutrients can kind of be absorbed through all the different levels. Uh, so 5.9 is good. I know it was at 6.2 this morning, so it's going down a little bit. DO 5.7 is a little bit low on dissolved oxygen. You kind of want it higher. Uh, it could be signs of bacteria in the system, but you know, it's still within proper range uh, and ORP as well. You know, anything over 300 is also good. So the water is very, very clean and sterile in the system. So 
we are good there as well and obviously you don't do that just for the bok choy you would do this sop every morning when you come in throughout the entire farm but we're good on that water level is okay um the system will probably call for a tank top off very very soon here and uh and then re-inject some fertilizer on it but uh we're not we're within safety and if ever there was like a water shortage or something like that we still have plenty of water for the farm so next we're going to go have a look at the light intensity now make sure we're not burning the plants and go from there okay so we're back at the farm here so i'm going to check multiple things one the root zone i want to make sure the root zone are crispy white just like snow and that is a good indication right here of a healthy root zone that the water is not the fertigation water is not too hot uh, that there's no bacteria in the system and that the nutrient intake is at peak efficiency and as you can see it's pretty much as white as it gets when it comes to uh, hydroponic systems so we're good there next what i want to do is hand measure what my ec my ph is in the actual tray compared to what i had in the irrigation skid it should be off by a little bit but it's going to give me a good amount of measure to make sure that they're eating or taking in their nutrient would be the proper term. 1.5 EC, so a slight, a little bit higher than what the irrigation skit is. So we may be overfeeding slightly on that. That's something you would want to keep an eye on, on the daily. You want it ideally to be a bit lower, but we could take a measurement further down the farm and see if we're getting the same reading. And let me just check with my pH here pH will always be a little bit higher inside the tray. It's a good sign that the um, plants are taking in the nutrient and therefore making the pH go higher inside the tray. So that's very good. We want to be a little bit higher than what the irrigation skid is. Also keep in mind, you gotta keep these things calibrated or else that data is completely useless. Um, so normally I'd go and probably do another reading at the end of the tray. It's usually pretty much the same information uh, that I would get. If I were to see a major difference in this EC or the pH, then I know something may be wrong, maybe overfeeding, maybe the sensors on the irrigation skid is not accurate, so I'd want to investigate further. Uh, but for now, everything was good. Next, light intensity. Uh, we want to make sure we don't burn the plants. So now we're going to do a reading on the light. So we have the sensor right here, and then we're going to read this exact top of the sensor at the height of the canopy so let's go like that right here at the height of the canopy and i have another screen right here i'm, I'm seeing it inside the farm i'm at 240 ppfd it's a little high for sure um so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to just and you know being two also helps i'm just gonna dim down the lights here a little bit and that will translate into some power savings as well and I'm gonna bring it to just about 180. Voila, 180 PPFD. And then I know that I have the proper lights and I'm not just wasting a bunch of light intensity for absolutely no reason. So next, uh, these bok choy kind of grow out a little bit wide and we want just a nice tight core. Um, so we're gonna go in and remove the big leaves and just so that the plant can concentrate all its energy into the core. So that's what we'll do next. All right, so now that we've adjusted the lights, um, these kinds of bok choy, they're called win-win choy, the first few leaves kind of grow really, really wide, and that causes a few issues where they're kind of in the way when we're walking, so we're damaging the product. And another thing too is that we want a bok choy that's really, really tight in the core. That's what consumers want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the base of those two big leaves that kind of spread out too wide from the actual plant, and that way the, the plant can concentrate its energy on building up that core. So I got this plant right here, and as you can see, it's kind of sticking out a bit. So I'm just going to go in and cut the bigger leaves like this and harvest those out. And that way it's nice and clear for walking. And it's also, uh, I remove one of those big leaves there so that it can concentrate more towards the center of the plant. And uh, we'll show you another in front there. We've done like a whole row so you can see what it's supposed to look like. Obviously, that's different markets. Uh, they have different needs, but in our market, uh, we want those uh, tight cores. And also there's a market for loose leaf bok choy. And that's a wrap on how to take care of bok choy mid-cycle. In about three to five days, we're gonna be coming in and harvesting them, packaging them for wholesale. So stay tuned for that video on how we go uh, clearing out this full shelf 
and preparing for the consumer market and the wholesale market. So subscribe to our channel to see that video and click on the uh, bell button as well to, to know when we're releasing that video. If you have any questions or comments, write them below and we'll do our best to answer them and to make a Q&A video.